Hi, this is Dr. Catherine Dow. I'm reporting the ACR 2022 with Room Now, and I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm attending ACR virtually, but I wanted to share with you abstract 0939. And this abstract um, is by Dr. Patricia Dar and her colleagues. And what they're doing is they're using uh, a new tool in order to screen cervical health in lupus patients. This is a pilot study. And what it is was that they took 30 non-pregnant women with lupus um, between the ages of 18 to 50. Now, I want to emphasize these patients were not pregnant and they were willing to do vaginal self-sampling um, using like a pap smear brush that they use the pap compound, but not necessarily brushing the cervix. So about... Um, 40% of the study participants had a lupus nephritis with more than 80% of them taking corticosteroids, hydroxychloroquine or other immunosuppressants. Now these women were interviewed um, and surveys were administered looking at their sexual health, their sexual history, um, cervical health, whether or not they've had cervical cancer or abnormal pap smears, knowledge about HPV and opinions about using um, a self sampling brush to do this. The vaginal samples were obtained by the participants. It was processed and read by a cytopathologist. And despite the absence of quality indicators, meaning that there's no cervical cells, as well as um, indications of other quality measures, the samples actually showed pretty good preservation of morphology. Four out of the 30 samples exhibited abnormal findings. So this includes low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions and atypical squamous cells of unknown significance. Now, these patients were referred on to see the gynecologist. The patients found that the self-sampling was easy and that it was very comfortable, and many of them would actually self-sample compared to doing the traditional pap smears, which could be pretty uncomfortable. So while additional studies are needed to evaluate the sensitivity, specificity, um, positive and negative predictive value when doing vaginal self-sampling compared to the traditional pap smear, there's actually a huge take home message from this abstract. So the reason why the study really impressed me so much is that it's not just a novel approach to cervical cancer screening, but it was the data collected about these women. You know, and as rheumatologists, we're, we're so busy about trying to take care of the rheumatic diseases that we totally forget about, you know, addressing the patient's other needs and educating them about sexual health and reproductive health. And so what the study authors collected in terms of their data was that they found that 70% of these women actually had an STD that's not HPV. And then only 16% had ever been vaccinated for HPV. Now, some of these women were actually pretty young. The mean age was about 30, 39. Um, and then the average number of lifetime sexual partners for these patients is about 9.5. And But then only 26 percent of them actually use condoms or any kind of barrier method. And additionally, about 70 percent of the patients have had prior history of cervical cancer, um, but very few of them actually went in for routine um, evaluation by a gynecologist. So most of the participants actually had um, understood that HPV can cause cervical cancer, but very few of them were actually aware that HPV can cause oral, pharyngeal cancers, genital cancers, and warts. And in that study, they found that 33% of these women, that's a third of them, had genital warts, and 23% of, uh, of them had prior oral warts. And so this is an important area that is lacking where we need to educate our patients to protect themselves because we know that immunosuppressants can accelerate the development of cervical cancer, as well as um, different vulvar cancers, penile cancers, oropharyngeal cancers, particularly when it relates to HPV. And our patients actually, um, you know, they're trying their best, but they just need a little bit of handholding and also a little bit of education in order to protect themselves. So this is Dr. Catherine Dow uh, reporting for Room Now. Follow me on Twitter at kdow2011.